Rosalind Warren and welcome to the Dare to Thrive Circle Entrepreneurial Summit. You know, every heart-led entrepreneur that I have ever met wants to know how to grow a business they truly love that helps people, provides financial stability, but without soul-sucking struggle and hustle. And that is especially true for the specific people we're talking with our guest about today. So I assembled a panel of experts who have each created a beautiful business that they love. And I'm thrilled to have them share their wisdom and insight with us. And today we're chatting with Susanna Ray. Susanna works with service-based coaches, consultants, and creatives to help them attract committed clients to their high value online programs. She's the host of the Introvert Entrepreneurs Powerhouse Community and has worked in online business since 2006. So if you are an introvert and wondering how you're gonna make this thing work, turn up your dial. Susanna believes that running a business should be fun, encouraging, and led with integrity. With the proper commitment and clarity, signing up clients continuously becomes natural and organic. Her specialty lies in her unique ability to take anything complicated, dissect it, put it back together in such a way that it's easy to understand and implement. And because of this, her clients gain clarity and receive amazing results in the shortest amount of time. A girl after my own heart. <laughs> Welcome, Susanna. Hello, and thank you for that beautiful introduction. Well, I am so excited to talk to you today about this idea of folks who consider themselves to be introverted. And even those of us who, like me, on the outside, look, this woman doesn't have an introverted bone in her body. Yes, I do. <laughs> it is the downside of after you've been up. So being introverted, how has this affected your online business strategy? Great points there that, in fact, everyone has introverted pieces in them as well because just before we go into the strategy know that introvert extrovert is a spectrum it's not that you're one or the other mm -hmm. but you might naturally act more one way or the other and it's more about how you gain your energies or mm -hmm. more importantly when you're introverted is how you lose your energy <laughs> and this when it comes to online business and the strategy behind it is one of the reasons why I moved into specialise in the space with working with the introvert entrepreneurs is myself as well. I am very introverted. And when I was starting out, there was a lot of online coaches always talking about a lot of what I would call the old fashioned methods of mm -hmm. gaining clients get on a call, have like 10 calls a day, have them back to back. You'll be booked out in three months. I was exhausted just hearing that suggestion, mm -hmm. let alone carrying it out. And what I realized actually with time is when we're introverted, how this can affect our strategy is if we're working online and you've got your own business as well, if you're not managing a team in quite a lot of heart-led entrepreneurs, they are very much solo business owners, mm -hmm. is to really think about time blocking your week. Think about what should be inward work and what is outward facing. So when it comes to doing beautiful talks and presentations, just like this one, you've had a quieter time beforehand. You're not racing for multiple calls into a space when you want to show and shine your best. So one of the key strategies for introverts is really about managing your time effectively and making you sure you are focusing on that one thing each day that you really need to get done. So like trying to avoid all that shiny object syndrome that happens online and stay a bit more centered into yourself. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, and, and I love the, the calmness before and then being on 
and then planning the time for after for the come down and and once you know yourself you'll know how much time you need for the come down and you just plan it and i know uh, many of us with what you said you just focus on this one thing and we're like, well if i just focused on one thing may, i'm only gonna be doing like what three things a week but if we really think about it as we try to focus on this 100 a week how many do we really do in a week like none <laughs> so well, three a week's an improvement <laughs> well also i'll have to say is every business owner who i've come across when they say i want to do one thing you ask them what that one thing is and in fact it's got like a million little bits to it so when we say oh i'm gonna write a blog okay now let's dissect this what do you actually have to do it's not really as simple as saying i'm going to write a blog because yes you need to write the words then you need to source images you've got to think about keywords you might Think about how I'm going to put it up. Where am I going to share it? So from one thing, like I'm going to write a blog, there are actually 10 tasks allocated to that. And so this is where if you're listening and going, oh, that's me, have that your one focus for the day, write a blog, but carry it all the way to the end. Don't stop with, well, I've written it, but you haven't published it. You haven't shared it. I haven't told anyone about it. That's something us introverts are. We we kind of forget. We go inward into mm-hmm. our heads, and we kind of forget we haven't told people about what we're doing. And a lot of my clients as well, I'll be going, "Well, have you told anyone about that masterclass that you've created?" And they go, "No." <laughs> and they go, well, "How do you think people can sign up if you don't talk about it?" And that's another part of the strategy is you've got to be a bit more concerted and focused with the outward aspects because naturally you think everyone else is in here in your head and they're not. <laughs> well, I can hear from that beautiful advice, which is true for all of us, again, introverted or extroverted, there's pieces to every process that we forget about. I personally happen to be a systems girl, which I know you are as well. And it's make a checklist, do a pilots, professional pilots who have how many hours under their belt of flying. They never turn the key on that plane without going over their written checklist, never ever do they just go oh wait now let's see i'm supposed to do that oh i've done this a hundred times and you know i won't forget anything yeah and it also don't you feel when you have a system set up like with the blog okay there's 14 things on it so this morning i'm doing the first three of my 14 things and then the outward i'm going to take that blog post on what two days later when i'm doing my outward focus and move it out And it gives us a place to go, but we have now gained all of this real estate back in our head. We're not trying to hold, how do you do this? So every time we go, oh, it's time to do a blog post. And we're trying to rethink all the steps. So how does that play out for you and your business? Very much so, as you say, I will have a series of templates and checklists and I have the process. Absolutely, as you start doing it more and more, some of it, you won't necessarily be looking at that checklist, Mm -hmm. but it's like if you go shopping and you write your shopping list, the process of writing the list actually makes you remember the steps or the things that you need to buy in the case of shopping and go out and do it. So I do have a sequence of set steps that I know I need to do. But it's a bit boring if we do things the same (laughs) every time. And this is the entrepreneurial brain going in. So people are going here who are listening to me and you might be, because there's lots of different personality types, even within introversion. And you have people who are planners and kind of systems, checklists, 
love planning. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm a J in the Myers-Briggs. I'm a planner on that sense. Mm -hmm. But if you're more with the go with the flow and you want to be spontaneous and shoot from the hip, you can still have a system, but have it so it's a bit more flexible. So rather than say a planner might like to time block their week and say they always do admin on a Monday, they write their blog on a Wednesday. If you're more go with the flow, instead have it as a checklist of I need to do admin this week, I need to write my blog this week and just check them off. So through the week, you can be leaning in to where your natural creativity is mm -hmm. and when you want to go with the flow. And if that's you, it's just as important to do it that way but the checklist you can then do in the order that suits long as you always get to the bottom of it that's <laughs> the key to a successful yeah. business the people who come to me and go it's not working susanna why aren't why isn't anything progressing is because they just keep doing their favorite things those things at the top of the checklist and they haven't got to the bottom outsourcing great place to move into if you know you never get to those bottom tasks Think about outsourcing those first. Yes, yes. And don't put 900 things on your list, just from experience. So in your opinion, what is the hardest task for a heart-led business owner to carry out? I took a lot of thought into this one. And I think the hardest task of all is actually owning your own time and being able to say no. Mm -hmm. It's down to boundaries because at the end of the day, those of us who are heart led, my clients tell me all the time, they go, Susanna, you're such an over deliverer and they'll be on calls and you might have a 60 minute call scheduled. And next thing you know, it's 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's two hours because you're in your flow and you're serving. So I really feel the hardest thing is getting those boundaries in place and beginning to say no you know even if you have to say little white lies to yourself or your clients along the line of i've got another call at the top of the hour so we need to finish up promptly you just need to put in the expectation not just for your client but actually for yourself and for me when people are starting out and they're heart-led because they're there and they want to help what happens is when we don't respect our own boundaries and our time, and also you want to respect your client's time, they'll be busy too. Mm -hmm. But what it can lead to is overwhelm and burnout because you're doing too much and you're not getting enough of that downtime in return. Yeah. Oh, and that, that also applies to bright, shiny objects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all I, love our bright, shiny I, objects. I, do, do I really need that? um 500 think <laughs> they're like oops is app sumo got a sale on <laughs> like oh i better go and find new software you don't need new software <laughs> it doesn't matter what I, time of year you're listening to this by the yes, way you don't yes. need that software <laughs> you you do not um i i know i found um also it's the idea of beginning to ask myself all right this thing would be really 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 great is there space on my calendar to actually implement it? Oh, great question. Yeah. And that has been, that has been a lifesaver. So what business model is best suited for introverted coaches? I would have to say, having tried lots of different ones myself, tried and failed, succeeded in the end, is what I think works really well is creating online courses when you're more introverted. And the reason for this, and I'm not saying purely passive either. So a lot of people think online courses, oh, that's gonna be passive income. They're brilliant, excellent. But if you want a completely passive product, you have to do a lot of marketing mm -hmm. to get the numbers rolling through. But I do feel online course model where you do it hybrid with having that element because remember you're heart led you want to connect with your people mm -hmm. so bring in some live training elements to it mm -hmm. but how this can help you when you're more introverted is if you have part of your program being pre-recorded video training 
So you've got your structure, you've got your philosophy in place, you know what you're helping and taking people through. So when you come to those sort of Q&A, tutor time, class time, whatever you call them sessions, all you need to do is just remind yourself of what is the topic that people are bringing, because if you're rolling through it multiple times, you might have to re sort of calibrate in your head what you're talking about. And then you are just going to be in your flow because you know your stuff, but you've got some structure behind it. What I tend to find is when people are more introverted and they want to go either the completely live model is to get very worked up of like, oh, but I've got to have everything. And there's like a million and one post-it notes all over the computer. And they think you've got to script everything. And equally, this is where doing pre-recorded videos, you don't have to show your face. I know some people say, oh no, you've got to show your face. Yes, do introductions, do lives. But when you're in the core of the training, you can absolutely just have those presentation slides, you're talking through, letting people know so you can be relaxed and at ease. And then you can be there live for your people. So it's really important to then have the balance. And the reason why I like doing it this way is then when it comes to the marketing, we all need to market, is you've got more time because you're not having to create the content the whole time. So you're not always serving and you're not always serving live one-to-one. -one. We, all of us in business, we do start with one-to-one -one services. And that's actually a very important step that we don't want to hop over because mm -hmm. what that gives us is a real connection to what our people want, what they're asking and how we can serve them. So you do need to do that first. But once you've had those initial clients, think about what is unique about you, your lens, and how you can bring that into a course. And then that will serve you really well for sustainable growth moving forwards. Mm, beautiful. I know what I found was it was, I knew it was time to do the course when I'm taking my one-on-one -on -one through the same thing. And I'm like, I don't want to ever have to repeat this again. I mean, what, 45 times is enough. It's just exactly. And so I did it one more time yeah. <laughs> to a live group and it recorded it. And now it's the academy because it's, it's, and it, it wasn't reaching enough people and it was ready. The, the material had baked and it was, the souffle was ready. Exactly uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to test it and know and yeah. no is ready and you've answered all those key questions but once you have it and even if someone's listening and they're going oh but i'm not so service-based even if you're a say graphic designer or you're creative and you create bespoke items there's normally an onboarding process you have with clients when you're asking them initial things and that can become mini recorded content. So yes. you're not doing that live every time, but you're still walking them through the process. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of ways different businesses can actually take this sort of recorded video side content mm -hmm. and free up most importantly, when you're introverted, you want to free up time in your week. So you have more time for you. So you can relax, energize, and then serve live so much better. Yes. And it does give you an opportunity to serve a wider audience because you're everyone from around the world is not needing to fit into your <laughs> awake time. So <laughs> I love it. This has been a fascinating conversation. Is there any final word as we're here together? Uh, we've, we're connected with those who are listening. Is there something coming to you that is this group needs to hear? Yes, there's one phrase I always like to pass on and that's make sure you create before you consume. So that means in your week, if you need to create the blog, the, blog, the newsletter, whatever, make sure you're doing that before you go into something like social media. So you've got that fresh brain. So you're doing the creation and then you're doing consumption. And that kind of follows into my social media as well, is use social media like a business, not a consumer, if you can. Like, give yourself limited time and just be
be really focused in that way i promise you with focus attention your business will grow so i'm not saying post and ghost but do go in engage and be part of the conversation but for short periods of time yeah it, it is truly for for those of us with heightened um empathic or uh you know this tendency it can be a total energy suck <laughs> and we don't realize it well Susanna I know that you have a free gift for our audience will you just tell us all about it yes I've just published an ebook called your online pathway mm -hmm. and this is specifically that I've pulled together a lot of the concepts I've been talking about over the years to help you see what your pathway is forward. And I break this down into the different stages of where you are at in business. And I call these imagination, creation, streamlining and scaling. And mm -hmm. I give you parameters so you can work out which one you fit in. And then what do you need to be focused on now to be able to grow and scale your business because we can't all do everything at once right. and it's really important that when you're at these different stages you're getting those foundations in place once that's in place you are ready to grow so that gift is the ebook for you all to download just published oh uh, that's so exciting um i i have a real heart for that subject because it kind of takes me back to your your list and we, we do the things we really want to do and the others never get touched. And when we go online consuming <laughs> and we see all these people doing all these things and we go, oh, that looks like fun. And that looks like fun. A lot of times our businesses are not ready for that. Number one, we don't really understand what's behind all of the, <laughs> the shenanigans. And we go, I'm going to do that. And then you're like, well, it's like I'm on a two-legged stool here. Nothing is being sustainable. So this is a powerful, fabulous gift. Thank you so much. And friends, you can access Susanna's book, Your Online Pathway, by clicking the button right below this video. And I'm looking forward to diving into all of that goodness myself. And thank you so much, Susanna, for all the wonderful tips you shared with us today. Absolute pleasure. It's been so lovely joining you. Well, you've been listening to Rosalind Warren and Susanna Ray on the Dare to Thrive Circle Entrepreneurial Summit. Remember, all of our interviews are available to watch and enjoy all week long through September 17th. And thank you for joining us. And until next time, believe everything is possible. Trust yourself and dare to thrive.